what you have in a project like this is that you don't have one body of literature that says this is Māori sexuality literature, this is about Māori sexuality. But what you do have is that you have a whole range of literature that says this is about tamariki Māori, this is about Māori children's development, this is about whānau, this is about the impact of the justice system on our well-being, this is about Māori women, this is about Māori men, and actually it's about going across all of that literature. Because all of those things are what constitute sexuality for Māori. So in fact, even though there's not one body of literature around Māori sexuality, we do have a whole range of both archival and contemporary writings that you can draw on to actually begin to piece together. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. You really do have to take a, a bit from here about whakapapa and look at that, and a bit from whānau and look at that. And then think, okay, if the early literature tells us that everyone in the whānau cared for tamariki, that primarily the grandparent generation, because the parent generation would be work, you know, out there doing the thing, gathering, bringing in kai, building, whatever, were there, the mokopuna and the um, grandparent relationship was really important but that Māori men and Māori women equally cared for children. Now, if the archival material tells us that, and whānau material tells us that whānau is extended, whānau is about interrelationships, whānau is intergenerational, and the whakapapa material tells us that there's all these lines of whakapapa that are equally valid, men and women, then why now do we have this idea that Māori, women, Māori men can't look after children? Yeah, it doesn't actually fit. So the project really uh, needed to bring together a whole range of information and literature and thinking and you know, understanding about being Māori in order to get an idea of what sexuality might mean.